Aloha everyone. This is part four of Queen of the Sun series. Today I want to tell you about the beings that are coming through the star streams that were opened in May 29th uh, connecting to the um, the Nutri universe, the Atosic universe that is our mother's milk, our the, the mother of this universe. And as I've been discussing in Queen of the Sun, the Queen of the Sun crystalline wave form is entering through that, that uh, portal or, or portals to be united with the King of the Sun crystalline wave form in the planet. Of course, this is all, you know, archetypal names for these things, but uh, it gives us an idea of what they are about. So today I want to focus on certain beings that are actually literally coming through the portals on the planet or certain portals that now they can do so because of the star stream connection from the mother universe. They, these beings don't actually abide in the Mother Universe. That's not what the Mother Universe is about. Uh, I'm calling it Mother Universe. It's a toxic, it's neutra. These are different terms Soth is used, but let's just call it Mother because it's the Mother Universe for the one we're in. The Mother Universe is not a place where souls reside. In embodiments or in, in that sense they connect to it in their deepest deepest being we are all connected to the mother universe but it's not like we think of a habitable zone so they're not coming from there but because the our universe is receiving the mother's milk of that universe they are able to come through from an aspect, well, let's see, how do I want to put this? I'm going to pause for a moment so I won't be stuttering and I can get it clear. Thoth has helped me out here because I, I'm asking him and because I'm having problems with it, getting the right words. And he's saying my problem, my sticking point is the word universe because what we think of a universe and what they think of a universe is really pretty different. So <clears throat> we need to go into the format of what they understand is a universe. And a universe is a holographic consensual reality field. The, uh, the state of beingness that it emanates from is for us our mother universe. That's the emanation field. So really, we might even have to try to find another word for you, for the mother universe, not even calling it a universe, but we're not going to do that. <laughs> this is getting too complex. <laughs> we're going to still call it a universe. <clears throat> so let's look at it this way. The mother universe has little baby universes, and we're one of them. And in those baby uh, plexes of universes, we can see ourselves as having the mother, and we have a, a negative field, like a like a negative, not negative like bad, but you know, a negative plate. That's where the antimatter energy forms exist. So every little baby universe has a uh, other polarity universe, and it also has mama. We all have the same mama, but there are other universes that have the same mama. That means that what I'm trying to say here is that these beings that are coming to our, into our holographic universe are coming from another one of the children universes of our same mother. Bingo. That feels right. Have they been here before? Uh, I don't know. I think 
that some of them might have, but it's been a long, long, long time, like back maybe in the Lotus period before it was descended into this planetary realm. So they haven't been here in the planet as we understand it. But they're coming now, and they're coming for a purpose because their kindred are calling them through. Now, I've always thought of kindred, as Thoth puts it, as beings like Thoth on different worlds that, you know, they look like us and everything, but they're like superpowers, you know, <laughs> they aren't quite like us. And, um, but I also have become becoming more and more aware, as Thoth has been un unrolling the scroll for me, that there are others that are um, not quite, don't quite look as much like us, and yet they're distant cousins. They're still, you know, they're still related. They're still part of the, the human kindred orientation, but they aren't quite as related. Now, if you take those, some of those, the ones that are in that relationship bond with us, and you, uh, well, Thoth has said that, that the, like the ETs, you know, the greys, the little guys with the big bug eyes, and they grab people in the night and all of this stuff, they are manufactured, they're created genetically to do certain functions and perform by beings that wish them to do that. And uh, they have, uh, you know, they're, that's a whole other story. It's not part of anything in the Unimanity Pact. The Unimanity Pact are those kindred with us that agree upon the fact that there's, you know, a way to op do things. It's kind of a, a Bernie crad of the universe, you know. <laughs> it, like, it like forms a, a principle, a basic basis of abiding with universal law. And they're very spiritualized beings, obviously. But there are those human-like beings that many of them look just like us that have left that pact. You know, they're the Nephilim. And they say, no, we don't want to do that. And maybe they have never done that. I don't know. You know, I don't know all of this. But, uh, and they're the ones that have done the genetic manipulations to create, you know, we can talk about them as Anunnaki and all of this, to create different forms. So um, they have created the the ones we see that we're so scared of, you know, that type. But if you go back, if you go way, way back into the original source for the DNA that they got to do that, that DNA comes from a particular species of humanoid that is our relative, but it's a little further removed in, in, on the family tree. And that particular species has then mixed with the closer humanoids, with the closer humans like Thoth, that kind, and created, but they had done so in a natural way, and created, uh, well, natural, maybe <laughs> like we understand natural, but not by grabbing people and doing DNA things to them. You know, it's like they've done it in a spiritualized manner is what I'm trying to say. And so that race, that kind of race, has then had its, um, it, it had its own forms in various planets and worlds and other of the children universes that we share. Oh, sorry to take so long saying all of this, but it's a little difficult to put it together. And it's really important right now, so I'm taking some time to do it. At least I think it's important from, from the perspective I'm working in here. And so we have these others, these other types of kindred that are a mixture of the... Okay, I need to come up with some names here, so I'm going to ask Thoth. Okay, well, you can never say that Thoth doesn't have a sense of humor. Oops, I'm putting this up here where you can see it. <laughs> but <clears throat> he is saying, why don't we call the original race that the, they, that the Anunnaki and whatever took the DNA from to create the little bug-eyed guys, we call those the Ba. Okay, and he says, let's call the ones that they mixed with to form a more human presentation, the Merc. So we have the Merca Ba, <laughs> or the Merca, the Merca, and then the Ba. He's give, just giving me 
some words that we can use here. I don't know why he doesn't give me the real names, probably because he knows I can't pronounce them. <laughs> and this is easy for me. So anyway, so we have the Ba going way back, you know, and then we have the Murka. And the Murka are the ones that have come forward in time with us, and they're the ones that are mixed with the human human aspect more specifically and are coming through now through into this world. Now, there's another factor, and that is some of them actually are already here of that Murka race, but they have been here they have been here a long time. They're not the same, um, let's say they're not from the same planet, or they've been in this universe for, for a much longer time. They originated from there. They came into this universe, and they've been here a long time, and they are the same race type as the Merka. So they are the Merka, but they're just a, a form that has been here for a while. These new Merka are coming through now, or in August, this is when the, they begin to come through. Now, I happen to know about the Merka that have been here a while, but and it's a very small grouping of them, small comparatively speaking, because several years ago, about two, three years ago, I was shown myself as one of them. Now, the ones that are working here and now, they're not like, you know, none of these Merka are illumined beings like Thoth, okay? They're, they're various. They're various types. They have the, you know, the wiser ones, the more spiritualized ones. You have the ones that are just fine. They have spirituality, you know, and they're doing their thing, but they're not that enlightened. And they're all in the same family tree. Like we have, you know, the Dalai Lama and we have the... The, the guy that's, you know, just trying to figure things out on the street. So um, it's kind of like that in the in the Merka zone of what we have that has been on the planet for a while. Not the planet, I'm sorry, the universe, and in, in this universe for a while. And they have been observing us, working with us in some very close spiritualized ways, working in tandem with the illuminaries and other ultra beings, because they are ultra terrestrials. These Merka are definitely ultra terrestrials. So uh, I had became aware that I was one of the little worker bees, so to speak, on uh, of the Merka that were present in working with certain systems and things helping the planet on some levels, you know, and I, and I don't feel that that's an unusual thing. Probably a lot of you listening now are there too. And you might be in other forms, and maybe you're not Merca, maybe you're some other kind of ultra terrestrial presence, you know? And you're one of the ones that's more normal in the sense of spiritual beingness. You have a lot of spirituality like you do now. Probably a little more aware, a little more enlightened in that zone because you're free of this incarnational spectrum. But, you know, you're not a guru sitting on a cloud of, or a luminary, let's say, sitting on a cloud like Thoth is, although he doesn't sit on clouds. So what I'm trying to say is it's not a big deal that I happen to see myself in this form, but I did. <laughs> so when I did, I um, decided to try to create, recreate an image of her. Well, the only way I can do that for me is in Second Life. And this is what I got. Now, just today, I went in and sort of massaged her a little bit because I had some old uh, formats on her that, uh, you know, I could do better stuff now. So I changed her just a tiny bit, but basically she's how she, I did her when I first saw her. But I just made her a little more realistic looking. <clears throat> and so you can get an idea. Of course, this is just one person. They don't look all exactly alike, but the... But the the features, you know, the large eyes, the very pale skin, the the, the uh, wider forehead is all, uh, whoops, that's not it. That's my queen of the sun. Here, let's stay over here. Um, this is what she looks like. And I think I've come pretty close to what I saw. 
And I chose that pull back hair because that's kind of how I saw her in the particular image that I saw. Now, the other night, I saw one of the, um, the new burqa coming through. And of course, they aren't really here yet from our timeline, but it doesn't matter. I just saw them. And I saw one. It was a male. And he had a much broader forehead, sort of a squared forehead a little bit, but it was definitely larger forehead, you know, than we have, like she does here. Um, and it was a very interesting thing to see. It was very pale skin, the very whitish hair. But he had his eyes closed. He was lying on sort of a table, but the table was slanted. And I had a feeling that perhaps he was in a, a preparatory state to come through to this realm. So that's kind of where it stands of what I've been receiving. And I started receiving about these particular beings. Um, gosh, I guess it was last year, the la latter part of last year. But I didn't know if they were here, they were coming. I didn't know anything about it until more recently, you know, with all of this star streams and now Queen of the Sun and now it's coming back in and I'm seeing it in a more uh, detailed manner. So what are they going to do when they get here? That's the next question. So Thoth is going to give us another name. Okay, here we go. Putting the, the letters N-A, Na, before Merka. So we have the Na Merka. And the Na Merka are the new ones coming in. And the Ka Merka, K-A Merka, are ones like the, this image you're seeing here, who been here for a while, a smaller group, a, a preliminary workforce that has actually been in this universe for a, a period of time and, and working on our planet for a period of time. I'm saying period of time because, you know, time is a sketchy thing when we're dealing with all of this. So the cause have been here, and they're among us now, and some of us are our cause in, in other, other forms, embodiments, probably. I think that I am. But the Na, in a the Namurka are the ones that are coming through beginning with August 13th, or in that time period between August 13th and 20th. So let's focus now on the Namurka. These are the ones that are specifically going to be working with the Pyramidus Radius Matrix. they will be totally involved in that. While the Ka are still going to be doing their job of helping us get to that point in regard to the little things that need to be done in consciousness and perspective and whatever they're helping us with that, and they have been for some time. But the, the Na, the new guys, they are really getting down to business. They're going to be within the main pyramids and also in some of the other pyramids. They will enter those pyramidal chambers. They will be doing work in there. They will be adjusting and, and reordering the frequency in a way that can only be done in a hands-on manner, so to speak. By that, I simply mean beings in this planet rather than some, through some previously set remote system as it has been up to this point. So this is what they will be working with. Now, how does this fit with everybody else's, what they're receiving and, and working with? You know, I don't know. All I know is that everything is a part of the whole. And all genuine perspectives of the uh, Akashic streaming and the um, beings that are communing with us, they're all coming together, giving each of us, giving different layers of the perception that's needed and the understanding that's needed. There are other beings coming in, working with other things that I'm not aware of. And those that are receiving information on those are probably not aware of what I'm saying right now. 
And yet there are crossover points. There are definite crossover points where this, all different channels are receiving at least some points of the same thing. And it's really important, I stress this because it's really important not to get confused with all of this. You're saying, well, well, well this channel said, and but this channel said, and this channel said, what do I make of all of this? I don't know. Well, first of all, you have to go to your inner being to really feel what resonates. But it's more than that because it's not necessarily that one person is right and the other person is wrong. Certainly people can receive misinformation or get, get it, you know, Maybe they're not receiving anything at all. It's their ego talking. There's all kinds of things that could happen. But there are a lot of genuine channels out there. And some of them have been channeling for a long time. And they have beautiful messages. But you might have two favorite channels. I'm calling them channels because I don't have another word to use for it. And, and one channel is saying one thing. And the other seems to contradict it. And you're like, ah, because both of them you respect. Both of them you trust. And all of a sudden... You're getting these two different messages. Well, it's going to happen a little more and more like that for a while because what they're doing is they're specializing. They're becoming more specialized on particular frequencies of what's going on in this layer and the other one's talking about what's going on in that layer. So there are all these layers. Now, some of these layers are going to fall away. I can't tell you which ones, but they're going to fall away. And the most prominently um, viable layers to move into the new earth experience in a consciousness factor within this holographic universe will grow stronger. So, but that doesn't mean that you're wasting your time uh, imbibing or taking in information that feels resonant with you on a layer that might fall away because it's in very likelihood it won't fall away because it's not a good channeling it will fall away because it's been absorbed into another form that is more viable to make it through the portal so to speak I, I'm, I'm using that term symbolically here it's kind of like no I'm not going to bring I'm not going to go into that Let's see, what do I want to say? Maybe I've said too much, but the, I, the bottom line of it is trust your inner feelings. And if you have several channels that you really trust and they all seem to be saying different things, know that it's not necessarily a contradiction. It's just to your mind because of your linear thought form and the way you're putting things together because you're a human being that you just can't see how it relates, how it comes together and that that might increase for a while where people are going to really say god so much is coming through but you know which one do i follow what do i think about that's because it's all coming all these pieces all these layers are coming up and channels are picking up on it you know each one their own their own path to it and at a, it'll reach a point where it just goes Whoa. <laughs> it kind of all comes together, you know. I don't know when that's going to be. So that's all I can tell you about it. All I can do is one of those quote-unquote channels, but both wants to call it source translators, uh, is to simply stay on my path. And I, I receive what I receive. I impart it to you. You accept, reject, take some, leave some, whatever you want, and move on. And um, so I just keep putting this flow through and I'm not trying to link it to anything else however if something pops up in my face that's really exciting um, link of some kind you know something that correlates I'm going to share that with you too because hey it's neat you know but um, it's not something that has to happen it's a free flow and we need to be with that in the space that we feel connected and we feel vibrant that is where we flow. And that's what I'm doing in receiving this information and sharing it with you from my stream, from my Thothic stream. Ah, okay. That said, so how now does this tie into the star stream? The, the I'm sorry, the Queen of the Stars crystalline 
waveform. Well, these waveforms and allow, allowing them to dance and being able to move in that way together is something that has to be calibrated. And the na merka are going to be the key factor in that calibration. As they come through and are present in the same portal path that the Queen of the Stars is coming through, that August 13th to 20th date, which, as I said on the other video, is the same period time frame that uh, Patricia Kobels, I'm sorry, I can't remember her name, was talking about in regard to what she is perceiving coming through. And I have that on the second part video, so you can go there, and, and also the link is attached to it and everything. But that period of time, the Queen of the Sun wave, crystalline waveform is coming through the planet, through into the planet from the star streaming connection to the mother universe. At the same, through the same period, the Na Merka are coming through. And this is no coincidence. They are ushering this wave in, and they are going to be guardianing it, as well as the King of the Sun, because the two are going to form a dance. And this is going to be calibrated within the Pyramidus Radius Matrix by the Na Merka. Merka the Na Merka. <laughs> now the Ka Merka, at that point, are going to help to disseminate it and to work it into our energetic fields. So the Na and the Ka kind of work together in that way. Now, there's a little part two that I'm going to tack on to this video here. My kindred and uh, former husband, Simeon Nartuman, recently wrote about the La Zen wave. And um, it's really interesting because it, it, I feel there's a connection between this and what I've been talking about from the 2016 Wiesach full moon through the June solstice, with what the Merc Merc Metatronic Councils of Light are calling La a La Zen wave was initiated. La Zen means a wave of light that brings peace, harmony, and balance. A La Zen wave is a massive wave of souls from various parsecs in the universe who enter into a coordinated effort to incarnate in a world needing assistance, bringing various specific frequencies with them. These souls undergo a specific attunement process prior to entering into the normal pre-incarnational staging zones. There are 144,000 souls incarnating in the original matrix of the La Zen wave. These souls then will then gather even more souls into the wave, and it will thereby grow to many, many millions of souls over a period of time. All of these souls will be assuming female embodiments over and over again. These souls coming into Earth under a unique directive and archetypal pattern that will also balance the population numbers on the planet naturally over time. This will occur as a result of their strong orientation with co-creation versus procreation. As of this writing, these first nine of these souls have already been birthed. And he goes on about this. You can read this. I will put a link to it on the page that I put this video. And so you can read the whole article, but I'm not going to go into it here. But um, let me see if there's anything else I want to touch on here before. Now, in another article Simeon recently wrote about the old fractals, and, and uh, I'm not sure what else he's writing here. Let's see. Um, he mentions... Okay, I'm trying to find it. Here we are about the Inner Light Network, which was something I originally received many, many years ago. And then when I met Simeon, we worked together. He really connected to Inner Light Network, and he he's like seems more connected to it than I am at this point in time. And anyway, he says, I've spoken of this group on and off for years, having been first introduced to them by my former wife, Maya, in 1995. 
I don't have continual communion with him as it comes and goes. Recently it came again, and then I became aware of a new program that's been implemented called the Human Frequency Liberation Font. Front? Front, yes. There will be more forthcoming on this, but what this involves but this involves special frequencies to open higher awareness centers to the human brain. These frequencies need to be embedded into food, water, energy sources, our planet, and its atmosphere. There's actual scientific research that's taken place covertly for a couple of years now on this specific program. He goes on about this, and it's really very interesting, so I'm going to put this article link connecting also to uh, this video where I embed it. But in any case, these particulars that he's talking about are really very connected to what I'm receiving about the the Na uh, Merka coming through. It's like all of these beings are being able to come through now because of, I believe, the Mother Universe connection that we now have that we didn't before May 29th, at least in our linear perception. So I'm going to conclude this part four, and I'm not sure how many parts of this I will have. There may be a, a lapse between this one and the next. However, what I am going to be doing is working with the tonal frequencies, and I don't know that I'm necessarily going to call that the Queen of the Stars series because it encompasses that. It, it does work with that, but it's, it's a little much of its own thing, so I might start a new series with that, and I believe that will be specifically for portal members. So this one, as we see it now, may have some more installments as we go along, but I'm just not quite sure. So thank you all for listening, and much aloha.